Hi everyone, welcome to a new video about .NET MAUI. Today I will talk about Shell and Flyout again. It was pretty long time ago I did that last time. But that video is one of my most popular videos. And I got a comment on that video. One of the viewers asked me how to lock the Flyout and make a compact mode. So I started thinking about that. How can you easily do that? And uh, that resulted in this video, because it's not that simple to make compact mode in Shell as it should be, I think. But it's not that complicated either. But I will show you that in this video. And if you want access to this source code, you can join my channel as a member and you will get access to all source code I write. And you will also get early access to the videos and you support the channel. So let's go and create a flyout that can be locked and be compact. So here we have Visual Studio. I've already created a small app and I have set flyout behavior to locked and that means that it will be open by default. So we can run this app on Windows because I guess it's most on desktop and tablets you want this behavior. On mobile you often will have it fly out because you have a smaller screen. So this is how this will look by default. We have the flyout here, it's locked, and we cannot do anything with it. So the easiest way to get the compact mode, and with compact mode we mean we will only see the icons, is to change the width. So if we go here to Visual Studio, and we can do it with the hot reload, so we will easily see the result. Setting up it with split screens like this. We can hide the diagnostic tools and then we can go here and say fly out width is for example 65. I've tried this before and I will see that 65 so looks pretty good. We have the icons here and but now you also want to be able to expand this. So if you want you can have compact mode and if you want you can have full mode. And for that my suggestion is to add an icon here at the bottom and then go and create some width animation. And that is pretty easy with .NET MAUI. So what we first can do is to add the icon at the bottom. So for that we will create a footer. So footer. And here we can add some content. So in this case, I will add a grid because I make this easy for me. I have two different icons that I use and two different images. I do like this, I add them here. So I have one image that is expand and one minimize. And now we can see that it appeared at the bottom here, but it did not look that good. So we will go and add some padding to the grid. Let's say padding 10. Yes. And I like that it's a little bit more to the right. So now when we have that, we can go and create some code. But we also need this to be triggered. So for that, I will add a tap gesture recognizer. Grid dot gesture recognizers. And we cre create a tap gesture recognizer. And a tapped event handler and we can let Visual Studio create that one for us. So this is everything we need inside of the flyout. Now we'll go and create the animation code. And if you have seen my videos about animations, you know that it is pretty simple with animations in .NET MAUI. But I will show you again here how I create this and how to use it for this flyout animation. So we go to the code behind of the shell file here and here we have the gesture recognizer. So the first thing we'll do is to check if the image for expand is visible. So if expand, the name we gave that image, then we'll write the code for minimize the flyout. So what we do then is create an animation, var animation. New animation, and here we have a lambda expression, current, because the 
that will be the current value in the animation. And here we set fly out width is equal to current. So that means that it will change the value every time it hit this lambda. And that will go from 65 to, let's say 250, I think it's pretty good value. And we can also set some easings if we want to, but we don't do that for now. Uh, just remove that parenthesis. So, and now when we have created animation, we will go and commit it. So then we do animation.commit. And here we can see that we will set an owner, this, and name, let's say expand, and then rate, length, easing, and finished. And uh, we will not set a value for length because 250 is pr pretty good and that is milliseconds. So we will do a handler for when it's finished. Finish is then a lambda expression. The end value. And the second one is if it was cancelled or not. Cancelled. And just like that. So what we will do here is to set expand is visible to false. Expand dot is visible is equal to false. And then we will set minimize dot is visible to true. Just like that. And then we just close it like that. So that is everything we need to do the animation here. But of course we also need to animate it back. So we create an else. And we copy this one. Just like that. And we change the value here. Or we switch the values to 250, 65, change the name to minimize. And those names can be a for example, if you want to cancel the animation, we can call them by name. And then this will be the opposite. True, false. So it's not harder than that. And now we can try to run this again, just to verify that this works. And so, and now we have the flyout here. And we have the expand button, and we can go and click it. And it will do the animation. And then we click again, and minimize it. So the only thing here that I did not like is that we don't get an indication on this button that we click it. But that will be an easy fix. We just add a style for it and a visual state group. So I have already written that one. So we go here and we add it here to the shell file in the bottom, for example. And as you can see here, uh, it's a style for target type grid. And I give it a key image button. We have it the visual states group. We have all the default states for a Grid, we have common states, normal, focused, and point over. So if we go and add that to the grid, it will look much nicer. So we say style is equal to static resource image button. So now we can see that we have an indication on point over here. And that is much nicer, I think. So that was it. It was really simple to accomplish this, just with a simple animation. So, and if you want to get access to this source code, you can download it from GitHub if you became a gold member of my channel. And as I said in the beginning of the video, you will also get early access to videos and you will support the channel. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and we we'll see you next time. Bye bye.